Hello, this is Ms. DB. In this video, we are going to talk about domain, range, max, and min, as well as reviewing continuous and discrete and functions. What's a function and how do we solve for continuous and discrete? So a continuous function has a smooth curve or line with no breaks. A discrete has just a separate list of points. There's also something called a discontinuous function, which we'll be talking about, which is partly continuous, like this example, but there might be a break in it, like possibly a, um, a hole, which we looked at when we looked at rational functions. So if there was a hole in a function, it would be called, oops, I got a white pen instead of a colored pen there. It would be called discontinuous. And there's some examples there. The domain of a continuous function, let's go back to it function, not a discontinuous, is described as all the possible x values. So in the example of this linear function up here, the domain would be all real numbers. And the range is the description of all the y values that you get based on the domain. And again, in a linear function, the range is all real numbers. That's not always true for a, a continuous function. Sometimes the domain will be something like x is greater than or equal to 0, and the range might be y is less than or equal to zero. So you'll describe the domain and range if it's not all real numbers with less than or greater than signs. For a discrete function for the domain, you can just list all of the possible x values that you had. So in this one, one, four, five, and seven, and the range values would be what you got for the y values with given that x value. So three, six, eight, and nine. And you can just put these curly brackets around that. So for numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to say if it's discrete or continuous, and I'm going to add or discontinuous, because there's one of these that is discontinuous, and then give the domain and range. So for 1 and 2, these are both discrete, and for the domain and range on these ones, you're just going to list the possible x values. Or the x values that were used so and put those curly brackets around them whoops sorry that's a zero not a four zero three and ninety and the range is the y values that you had there's four twenty and thirty three if you can put these in order from lowest to highest least to greatest and don't repeat any numbers twice even if they were repeated within that relation or function I want to look at number four because this is the one that's really not discrete or continuous. It's really discontinuous. I didn't write that as an option, but that's what it would be. Because it's continuous from here to here and continuous from here to here, but there's a break. So that's called discontinuous. The domain of this one is interesting. The domain would be, let's see, this arrow means that it would continue in this direction. So it can be any negative numbers up until right here. This is 3. So our domain is that x is greater than or equal, wait, less than or equal to 3. And also x has to be greater than or equal to 6 because there's a break in here where you cannot, there is no x values in between here. Greater than or equal to 6. Another way to write this would be that x is from negative infinity to, here let's write it this way, negative infinity to 3 and again from 6 to infinity. There's different formats for writing domains, so either of these would be fine. There's even another way, but we'll leave it at those two. The range, let's look at range. So the y values in this function are never above 6. And it can be 5 and 4 and so on because this, this part of the function, this branch, includes those. This branch is from 4 and down, so when I describe this one, it actually is enough to describe all of them. So y is less than or equal to 6. 
or you can say from negative infinity to six. Go back in time a little bit and put square brackets around these two. The square bracket means to include it, and I forgot to do that on that last one. So the square bracket on this one means to include the point of y equals six. And there is no other part to worry about. We don't have to also say and y is less than or equal to four because that would be included in the y is less than or equal to six. So we don't have to do it twice. All right, next part is reminding you of what a function is and what a function is not. So if you can use the vertical line test, if it only passes through your function one time, then that is a function. That means that for every value of x, there is one and only one y value. On these examples over here, if you draw a vertical line, it passes through the graph two times. So there, it does, this fails the vertical line test. This is not a function. So for the next few problems, you're going to say yes or no if it's a function, and then give the domain and range. So the domain and range can be given whether it's a function or not a function, because relations have domain and range too. So 5 and 6, if it is a function, let's look at 5, if every x value has 1 and only one y value. So 5 has the y value of 6, Negative 1 has the y value of 5, 7 has the y value of negative 3, and 0 has the y. This is a function because each and every x value is matched to one and only one y value. So the domain then, you would just list all the x values like we did already. And if you can, put them in order from least to greatest. And the same thing for the range, just list all the y values. And again, list them in order from least to greatest. If there's any numbers that show up twice, just write it once. In number six, let's see if this is a function. We have the x value of negative seven being matched to eight, and then we have the x value of negative seven being matched to nine. This is not a function because the x value of negative seven is matched to two different y values. So this one is not a function, and you can, you can type the y. You didn't, it didn't say you had to explain in this one, but if you ever do have to explain, There's an x value that is matched to two different y values. And along those lines would explain why it is not a function. And then the domain and range will be given the same way. The only difference is, since negative 7 showed up twice in the domain, you wouldn't write it twice. You would just write negative 7, 8, and 9 for the domain. And the range is only 8 and 9. There's only two values for the range. All right, let's move on to the next section where there's some graphs. So the same directions apply. You're going to say whether or not it's a function and then give the domain and range. The thing about when you have it in a graph is you can use the vertical line test to determine if it's a function. So the vertical line test, again, is if you draw a straight up and down vertical line and it only crosses through the graph at one point, then it is a function. This does pass the vertical line point test. If it passes through the, the graph at two points, then this is not a function. And the domain is where this one, it's going to continue in both directions. So we don't just look at what's on the scale of the, the graph. They're just giving you a piece of the graph. And this one, you could say that the domain goes from negative infinity to infinity or you could say all real numbers. All real numbers. That looks like red. Real numbers. And the range is limited in this. It's The range is not going to go all the way down and all the way up because it's oscillating between two points. It's kind of hard to see that, but the lowest this range is ever going to be is negative 1, and the highest it'll ever be looks like 1. So you can write the range as going from negative 1 to 1, or you can put that y is in between 1 and negative 1. And it looks like, I think it's touching, so then these should be square brackets then. Infinity never gets square brackets, it always gets open brackets, because there's always one after infinity. But the 
if you want to include the point, then put the square brackets around it or write it this way. And in number nine, the domain is just x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range is going to be all real numbers because you're, it's extending in both directions. All right, so let's see what else we got going here. For um, number 10, it can be a function even if it has a whole. The domain is going to be written in two parts. Like the first part would be that x is less than negative 5. And also, x is going to be greater than, I think that's 1, greater than or equal to 1. The range, though, let's see, it can be on this side, on this part of the branch over here, it's y is greater than or equal to, no, just y is greater than negative 3, because it's got an open circle there. But then here, it's y is greater than, less than, or equal to negative 3. So when you put those two parts together, the range is all real numbers because there's no number that's not included in those two parts. Next, we're going to talk about maximum and minimum of a function. Some functions have a maximum, some don't. Some, some have a minimum point and some don't. Um, some have both, some have one or the other. Some of them have absolute minimum, where this is the lowest point ever on the graph. And some of them don't have that. Some of them just have maybe a relative minimum where it is the lowest part of this section of the graph. This one also has a relative maximum. This is the, the highest point on this section of the graph. There's no absolute max on this graph because this would continue to infinity on the ends. And you can estimate the relative and absolute max and mins from the graphs if you, can, if you don't know exactly what it would be from the function. All right, let's look at a couple examples. If they give you an equation, you can graph it if you want, and then decide. If they don't, if they give you a graph then, and not a function, then you can just estimate the max and min. So let's look at, um, let's look at 13. The domain is going to be all real numbers because there's no value that x cannot be. The range, though, the range is only going to be from this point and down. So this is at 8, so we would say that y is less than or equal to 8. There is a maximum in this one. It's right there. So that is at the point. I think that's at 5. Or really close to it anyway, 8. And the minimum, there is none. Because it's going to continue down in both directions, and there is no relative minimum within a range either. In number 14, you can find the domain and range. There is going to be lots of different things for this one. There is a relative maximum here and here. And there's a relative minimum here and here. So there's no absolute max and no absolute minimum, but there are some relative max and some relative mins where it makes those curves. And you can estimate those points and put them in for the max and min. In um, number 15, when you write the domain, you have two options. You could say that it's from negative infinity to zero, but not including zero. and then again from 0 to positive infinity, or you can say it's all real numbers except x cannot equal 0. And is there any max? This is going to continue forever in that direction. The min will continue forever in this direction. There's really no max or no minimum in this problem. There's not even a relative max or min because there's no like high point or low point within a range. So sometimes there's just none. This is an example of a rational function like y equals 1 over x, something like that. And in 16, you might want to graph that. That's a cubic function. You will find that it might have a max and a min. And number 17, I'll give you a hint on 17. 
the square root of x looks very similar to this. So you can look back at that example. Um, number 18, to do y equals the absolute value of x, um, that's going to, I'll give you an idea of what that would look like. That will be a V shape, straight lines, not curved. And for the domain, it can be all real numbers, but the range will be limited. And it won't have a max, but it will have a min. It'll have an absolute min. Um, in 19, I said you don't need the max or min. I just want you to practice writing the domain and range of a discrete function from a graph. All right, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, and have a great day.